For part two, we are going to go over the solutions to the four problems posed at the end of part one. So you're at Subway getting yourself a sandwich for lunch and you are trying to figure out um, how many lunch possibilities you have. There are a few restrictions. Uh, we are assuming for your budget you can have only one type of meat and only one type of cheese. But other than that, uh, I suppose we're also making the assumption that you must have some kind of bread, otherwise it wouldn't really be a sandwich. But you can have um, an unlimited number of the produce and the condiments. So, to do this problem, let's break it down into tasks. The first task will be selecting the bread. There are one, two, three, four choices for bread. So task one can be done in four different ways. Now for meat, uh, you can have only, at most, one type of meat. There are, there's turkey, salami, roast beef, and tuna. There are four types of meat here. Uh, that means, ah, but you might be a vegetarian, so you might choose no meat at all, in which case uh, there should be five choices for how you can pick your meat. I don't know why I wrote down six, but apparently I did, so let me correct that here. Let me correct that to six. That means my answer on the first page is definitely going to be wrong. <laughs> All right. Next, let's pick your cheese. Again, this is another one of those cases where you can pick one of the cheeses offered, either Swiss processed cheese food, American, or if you're lactose intolerant, you may select none. So there will be four choices for cheese. And now you can pick your produce. And in fact, to pick produce, there are seven different kinds of produce. Lettuce, sprouts, pickles, banana, peppers, tomatoes, onions, and cucumber. And you can either choose to include it or not for each type of produce, leading to two to the seventh choices for your produce combinations. <clears throat> Similarly, when you pick condiments for task five, there are seven condiment choices, mustard, mayo, ranch, vinegar, oil, salt, and pepper. So there will be two to the seventh choices for how you can put condiments on the sandwich. Now, using the product rule, since we want to have all these tasks completed, uh, we multiply to get the final answer. And of course, I made a mistake previously, so it's going to change my answer. So rather than 6, that better be a 5, uh, and that will change my final answer here to be something different. 5, uh, and that will change my final answer here to be something different. So now we're going to end up with 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 14, uh, 2 to the 18th sandwich combinations. This gives us a grand total of 1,310,720 sandwich combinations. The second problem actually has three parts. We're asked to find how many numbers between 200 and 999 have no repeated digits, have exactly one repeated digit, and have at least one repeated digit. So let's start with the first question, no repeated digits. We'll break this down into three tasks of selecting each digit in turn, and it's easiest if task one is to select the 100th digit, because that's the one with restrictions on it. The 100th digit has to be selected from the set of integers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
uh, in order for our number to be between 200 and 999. So there are eight choices for the 100s digit. The second task will be to um, select the tens digit. Now the tens digit can be selected from anything uh, 0 through 9 except for whatever the one choice was that was made in task 1. So we uh, restrict from all 10 possible digits to two 9 choices. And task 3 will be to select the ones digit, which also can be done from the set of all digits 0 through 9, except for the two that were selected previously. That means there will be 10 minus 2, or 8 choices. So the total number of ways we can create a three-digit number between 200 and 999 that has no repeated digits will be 576. Let's consider the case now where we want to have exactly one repeat amongst the digits. We'll break this down into cases based upon where that digit is repeated. In case one, the repeat is going to be in the hundreds and the tens position. We'll break this down into two tasks. First, selecting the repeated digit, which because it includes the first position, the hundreds position, has to come from two through nine, so there will be eight choices. And then, selecting the ones digit, which will come from uh, zero through nine, except for what was previously chosen, so there will now be nine choices. And that gives us 72 numbers where the repeat occurs in the hundreds and the tens position. Case two, we will have our repeat occurring in the hundreds and ones position, but the argument, the selection, and the number of choices will be exactly the same. So there will be 72 numbers uh, there. And then finally, for case three, the repeat will occur in the tens and ones position, task one will still be to select the leading digit, there will be eight choices, and task two will be to select the repeated digit, and there will be nine choices. So we have uh, three choices, three cases, each case can be done 72 ways, so the final answer for the numbers between 200 and 999 that have exactly one repeat will be the product uh, 72 times 3 for giving us 216 such numbers. For the third part of this question, we want to know how many numbers have at least one repeat. We can break this down into two disjoint sets, uh, namely case 1 will be the numbers that have exactly one repeat, uh, we just did that in the previous part, there are 216 such numbers. And case two will be the three-digit numbers that have all three of their digits exactly the same. Well, that's going to be 222, 333, 444, 999. There are eight of those. By the sum rule, we add those together to give us a grand total of 224 integers. Uh, that are between 200 and 999 with at least one repeated digit. Now, if you don't like that method, we could try a different one. Instead, we could count the size of the complementary set, namely, start with all the numbers between 200 and 999 and subtract off those numbers with no repeated digits. That will leave you with the numbers that have at least one repeated digit. Well, there are 800 numbers between 200 and 999. In the first part of this problem, we determined there were 576 numbers with no repeated digits. So the difference here gives us 244. Notice this is exactly the same answer as doing it the other way. So I think we can be pretty assured that we have done all three parts of this problem correctly. For the third problem, we were asked, in how many ways can you create a subset of three elements from a ten element ground set? We can start by picking three elements from our ten element set. 
um, in an ordered way, uh, just like creating the three-digit numbers before. So there will be a first element, a second element, and a third element. And this selection, can, there will be ten choices for the first element, nine choices for the second, and eight choices for the third, giving us 720 choices for an ordered set of three elements. Remember, in a set, order doesn't matter. In fact, if we have this subset that contains A, B, and C, that could be created by one of six different orderings. A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A. In each three element subset could have been created in one of six ways. This is a cow counting argument, but our cow happens to have six legs. That means the total number of subsets will be 720 divided by the six legs, giving us 120 subsets. And finally, I just want to draw your attention to example 6.1.21 in the book. Uh, in this example, it counts bit strings of length 4 with no repeated ones by using a tree diagram. And I've included that tree diagram for you here. Uh, notice if you add a 0, you can then add a 1 or a 0 after it. But if you have a 1, it must be followed by a 0 because we're not allowed to repeat 1s. I ask you just to look at this and count how many 1-bit strings are there, 2-bit strings, 3-bit strings, and so forth. Look for the pattern. Can you generalize it? And you should know, I am a fan of Fibonacci. Now you're ready to go on to part three, which will start section 6.2 on the pigeonhole principle.